Hello everyone. Welcome back to this online class. Today we are going to look at how to solve non-homogeneous linear ODEs of the second order. And uh, in particular, we are going to look at the method of undetermined coefficients. Now we have this question. We are asked to solve the following differential equations. In part A, we have d squared y over dx squared minus 2 dy over dx plus 2y is equals to x sine x. And in part b, we have d squared y over dx squared minus 2 dy dx minus 3y is equals to x times exponential negative x. So we need to find the general solution. So let's start with the part a. We need to write the ODE in terms of the D operator. So we can say let, let D be derivative with respect to X. So that this implies that where we have D squared, this is the same as the second derivative with respect to X twice. So now with those uh, D operators, we can now rewrite the given differential equation in part A. So you can write part A in terms of the D operator. Our ODE will now look like this. D squared operating on Y minus 2 D operating on Y plus 2Y is equals to X sine x. And you see on the left hand side, the function y is common, so that can be factored out uh, to get this equation. Now when you factor out uh, the y here, we are going to get this d squared minus 2d plus 2. This one is operating on y to give us x sine x. Now, take note that uh, when we talk of non-homogeneous ODE, it is the case where the right-hand side is not zero. Because we said when the right-hand side is zero, then the equation is homogeneous. If the right-hand side function is not zero, then the equation is non-homogeneous. Now to get the solution, the general solution of a non-homogeneous ODE, uh, we are going to get what is called the complementary function and particular integral. So that when you sum the two, that will give you a general solution. So the first thing that you need to do is to get the complementary function, C, C, dot f to mean complementary function. And we are going to use y subscript c as a function of x. The c there denotes complementary function. How do we find it? So what you need to do here is to solve, let me say, you solve the homogeneous part, homogeneous part, of the given ODE. Let me call this equation star so that I can refer to it. So homogeneous part of equation star. When you talk of homogeneous part, you let the right hand side to be equal to zero. So what you need to solve is this one, d squared minus 2d plus 2 operating on y to give us zero. So this is the homogeneous part of the given ODE. Now, to get the solution, we need to know our auxiliary equation. So in this case, we write auxiliary equation. Auxiliary equation is uh, d squared minus 2d plus two is equals to zero. Now we can find the roots of this equation. Remember this is quadratic 
equation in D. So the roots, there will be two roots. You will use quadratic formula uh, so that uh, the first and the second root is given by negative B, that is negative of negative two, plus or minus the square root, B squared, that is, our B is negative two, so we square it, then minus four times our A is one, the C is two. I'm using quadratic formula. Let me take this up. So that uh, the all of this you need to divide by two times A. So two times our A is one. So this can as well be written as two plus or minus the square root of, uh, here we'll have four minus eight. Four minus eight is negative four. Then of uh, denominator, which is two. And remember, this we can as well write as two plus or minus the square root of four, simply negative one times the square root of four, everything over two, which you can as well write as two plus or minus iota times two divided by two. Iota is the square root of negative one. So you can take note that the iota is a Greek symbol i that is read as iota is the same as the square root of negative one. So I can simplify, divide by two, both numerator and denominator, so that we get uh, one plus or minus iota times one. So these are complex conjugate roots. You can comment here, you write complex conjugates. So how do we write our solution when your roots are complex conjugates? So you can say, therefore, the solution corresponding to those roots is given by yc as a function of x is equals to exponential x. Remember that uh, this one is alpha and the other one is beta. So this is, I can use another color. This is alpha, this is beta. In general, it's always the same as alpha plus or minus iota times beta. So that uh, your general solution is the same as exponential alpha x times C1 cos beta x plus C2 sine beta X. So if I replace alpha and beta, I am going to get uh, this. I'm going to get because alpha is one, so this exponential x times c1. This other one is cosine of x plus c2 sine of x. Of which, if I open the bracket, you can write this as c1 exponential x cos x, then plus c2 exponential x sine x. You can write here or yc of x. So that's our complementary function. You've seen how to find the complementary function. You simply solve the homogeneous part of the given non-homogeneous ODE. That's the first solution. Let's get the particular integral, our second solution. So you write Roman two, particular integral. Somebody might ask, what is this that we call particular integral? Particular integral means that it is any it is any particular solution, any particular solution of 
the given node E. That's what we call particular integral. And uh, how do we find it? Remember, there are three ways of finding the particular integral. The first method is the method of undetermined coefficients. Another method is the use of inverse D operators. And the third method is the use of the method of variation of parameters. Now, in this example, we are asked to use the method of undetermined coefficients. That's what you're going to use here. Now, look at our given ODE. Let's go back. to the given equation in part A, look at this function here on the right-hand side. The function on the right-hand side, I'm going to call it R of X. Now R of X is equals to X times sine X. So let me write it here. Our right-hand side function, the right-hand side, function, what we are calling R of X, it is equals to X times sine X. Now, X here, the X is a polynomial of degree one. So this is a polynomial of degree one is linear. Now this other one, sine x is trigonometric sine. It's a trigonometric function. So this is trigonometric, trigonometric sine. So for you to find the particular integral, which we denote by y sub p is denoted by y subscript p as a function of x. This is how you're going to get it y subscript p as a function of x, you simply get the general forms of this pro these uh, polynomials or simply the functions on the right hand side. So let me ask you, what is the general form of a polynomial of degree one? You write this as a1, a1x plus b1. That is, a general form of a polynomial of degree one. What about when you have sine or cosine? The general form is a two, a two sine x plus a three, not a three, I can just talk of b two. Those are just constants. So let me say plus b two, uh, this is now because x. So remember, it's a product of polynomial and trigonometric sign. So you get the general forms of those functions. So that if I open the bracket here, what will we get? We are going to get a1x should multiply a2 sine x. So that will give us a times x sine x. Again, a1x should multiply b2 cos x. That should give us b times x times cos x plus. Now let's take b times a2 sine x. That's, let's call it now c. c sine x. And then uh, b1 times this other one, b2 cos x. That should give us. Let's talk of D cos X. So that's what we have. Now, what I'm calling A is, uh, let me let me denote, let me write it here. You take note that uh, the A here is simply A1 times A2, where we have A1 times A2, we call that A. What I'm calling B is where we have A1 times B2. A1, B2. What I'm calling C is B1, A2. And our D is uh, B1, B2. 
Remember, when you multiply any two arbitrary constants, you get another arbitrary constant. So in this method, we know the choice of the particular integral. Now we need to determine these unknown coefficients, these constants a, b, c, and d. And that's why we call it the method of undetermined coefficients. So we need to determine them. We need to know their values. Now, before we proceed with this uh, choice of our particular integral, first of all, you need to uh, take note that, uh, look at the functions we have in our complementary function. You should ensure that none of those functions on the right-hand side of our complementary function is, the, is similar to the functions that we have in the YP, the particular integral. So for instance, uh, you need to ask yourself, if you look at our choice of YP, this function X sine X, do we have it here? Look at the one I've ticked. I cannot see X sine X there. What about X cos X? Do we have it there? No. What about just a constant times sine X? I can't see because here we have a constant times exponential x times sine x, but we don't have a constant times sine x only. We don't have it in the our choice of uh, the yc. And neither do we have a constant times cos x. It's not present in the choice of yc of x. So therefore, this choice of yp of x is the appropriate choice. So you can just say that, therefore, our yp, our yp of x is equal to ax, which is equal to ax sine x plus bx cos x plus cx, c sine x plus d cos x. So this one is the appropriate choice of yp. So I will comment here and write here that it is the appropriate, this is the appropriate, appropriate choice of our yp, the particular integral. Now, this solution is a solution of the given ODE. And when we say that a function is a solution of an ODE, then it must satisfy the ODE. By satisfying the ODE, we mean that if I substitute the function and its derivatives, into the given differential equation, then what we have on the left-hand side should be the same as what we'll have on the right-hand side. It means it satisfies the given ODE. So then I need to know the derivatives of this function, the yp of x. So you write yp double prime, yp double prime, this is another function of x. So how do we get it? We want to use product rule here. We differentiate. Remember, a is a constant. A constant. Differentiate x, keeping sine x constant. Plus now, we are going to differentiate sine x, keeping x constant. So a, x. When you differentiate sine x, you get uh, cos x. Remember, I'm using product rule. This is u. This is v. Remember, product rule is uh, u prime v plus u v prime. Again, here you use product rule. This is u and this is v. So when you differentiate that term, we get uh, b cos x a minus b x sine x. Somebody might ask, where, where is the minus from? When you differentiate cosine, you get negative sine. Now let's differentiate this other term. So that will give us C cos X. And lastly, the 
the other term, that the fourth term, that will give us negative d sine x. When you differentiate cosine, you get negative sine. And so this can be uh, simplified. L let me combine the like terms. If I do so, we'll have uh, ax cos x. That's this term. Then this other one is negative bx sine x. Those with uh, a constant times sine x only, which ones are they? This and this. Let me combine them. So that will give us a minus d sine x. I've combined this and this. And finally, b cos x and uh, c cos x, that's b plus c. b plus c cos x. Remember, this is the first derivative. First derivative is uh, y prime. So I'll uh, remove this one. It's not double prime. And the first derivative, that should be y prime. So now let's get the second derivative, y double prime. yp double prime of x. What is it equal to? So we differentiate the first derivative. Remember this, our first derivative. Let me write here y p prime of x. That's this what you have found in the first as the first derivative. So I can bracket it. So that's what I need to differentiate to get the second derivative. So that uh, when you differentiate this, you're going to get, again, here I use product rule. This is u. This other one is v. So let's use product rule. That will give us a cos x. I've differentiated u to get one. Now minus uh, ax sine x. When you differentiate cosine, you get a negative sign. Now again, minus b sine x. Then minus uh, bx cos x. Remember, I'm using product tool again here. One of them is u. This is u. And this is v. Then here we'll have uh, a minus d. When you differentiate sine, you get cosine of x. Then we'll have, when you differentiate cosine here, you'll get negative. So instead of positive there, let me write negative. So it's negative of uh, b plus c sine x. I can combine the like terms again here so that uh, if I start with the coefficients of x sine x, I'll have negative a x sine x. Then uh, do we have coefficients of x cos x? This one here, negative b x cos x. Now let me have the sine x times a constant. I have negative b sine x and another one here. So that will give us plus negative 2b, uh, then minus c sine x. I'm combining those two. And lastly, we have a cos x and uh, this other one, a minus d. So we'll have 2a plus 2a minus d cos x. So this is the second derivative. I can also bracket it. So this yp double prime as a function of x. Now let's see, because our yp is a solution of the ODE in uh, part A, and we now know its derivatives. Let's now replace this into the given ODE in part A. So this equation will now look like, look at it. It will now look at like yp double prime minus 2yp prime plus 2yp is equals to x sine x. So we are going to write that. Let me write it down. 
this means I'll have yp double prime minus two yp prime plus two yp should be equal to the right hand side, which is x sine x. Because we said it is a solution of this equation, so it must satisfy the equation. So let's substitute those derivatives and see what you're going to get. Get let me go back here. So that the, you can just say that our ODE in part A should now look like this. Uh, it should now be YP double prime minus two YP prime plus two YP should be equal to X sine X. So let's replace them. Look at the left hand side of this ODE. Let's add them. I want to add this function which are bracketed. So what you'll do to make your work easier is uh, you can pick uh, another color. So what you're going to do is this. Remember we are adding. It is this one minus twice of this then plus twice of this one. In fact, I can multiply those so that you see what is happening. The first one we got, uh, can use blue. We got negative A, X sine X minus B, X cos X plus negative 2b minus c sine x plus 2a minus d cos x. So that is the first term, yp prime. Then take negative 2 times yp. This is yp double prime. Now the other one is negative 2 times yp prime. So this one I multiplied by negative 2. So what will I get? So every time you multiply by negative two, so you'll get minus two a x cos x. The other one will now be plus two b x sine x. Remember we are multiplying by negative two, so the other one I expect to get a plus negative two a plus two d sine x and lastly we have uh, plus negative 2b minus 2c cos x now that's the second term the third term is 2 times yp look at our yp multiply it by 2 you see what we got ax sine x so the all of that should be multiplied by 2 so we'll have 2ax sin x plus 2bx cos x plus 2c sin x plus 2d cos x. That's what you need to write. So it's really, it should not be, let me write it here. So that would be plus 2ax sin x plus 2b x cos x plus 2c sine x plus 2d cos x. And what is the right hand side? The all of this should be equal to x sine x. Now, we need to simplify the left hand side. Let's see. I look at the functions where we have x sine x. I can see one is here, another one is here, another one is here. We can combine them because those are like terms. Here we have negative a, here we have 2b, here we have 2a. So that, that means that 2a minus a, that is a. So that will give us a plus 2b. 
and here we have x sin x. Let, let's look at uh, x cos x. I have one here, another one is here, and there's another one here. Here we have my negative 2b, the first one. The second is negative 2a, and the third is 2b. So it's like we have negative 2b minus 2a plus 2b. That will give us negative 2a plus b. Remember, 2b minus b is the same as b. So this is the coefficient of x cos x. What about uh, a constant times sine x? So I can see one is here, another one is here, another one is here. Okay, let's see, let's add them. Uh, we have here a plus. I can see there's negative 2a. What about b? How many are they? Just a negative 2b. What about the c? Negative c and this 2c, that would be plus c. And then plus 2d. This is the coefficient of sine x only. And finally, we need the coefficient of cos x, this, this, and this one. So that will be a plus. So we start with the a, I have 2a. Look at the b, that's negative 2b. What about c? We have negative 2c. The d there is positive d is equals to the right hand side, which is x sine sine x, x sine x. So the next thing is compare the functions on the left hand side and the right hand side. We equate, we equate the corresponding coefficients. So you're going to look at what are the coefficients of x sine x? What are the coefficients of x cos x on the left and on the right hand side? Coefficients of a constant times sine x. And remember here that I've left out something. This is cos x, so let me insert it. I've left out something very vital. Here we have cos x is equals to that. And now you ask yourself, what are the coefficients of a constant times cos x? Remember on the right hand side, you can insert what is missing. You can say plus zero x cos x plus zero sine x plus zero cos x so that you can easily equate the corresponding coefficients. So we now look at the coefficients of x sine x coefficients of x times sine x. Look at the left hand side and the right hand side. What do we have on the left hand side? It is a plus 2b. a plus 2b. What about the right hand side? Here we have one on the right hand side. So this will be our first equation. This is equation one. Let's also look at the coefficients of x cos x. What do we have on the left hand side? That is negative 2a plus b. What about the right hand side? x cos x, that is zero. So this is equation number two. Look at now the coefficients of sine x only, coefficients of sine x. On the left hand side, we have negative 2a minus 2b plus c plus 2d. So there we have plus c plus 2d. On the right hand side, we have zero. 
So this is equation three. And finally, the coefficients of uh, cos x only. What do we have on the left-hand side? We have 2a minus 2b minus 2c plus d. On the right-hand side, we have 0. So this is equation 4. So what we have done is to equate the corresponding coefficients. Now, look at those equations. There are four simultaneous equations in four unknowns. Four equations in four unknowns, A, B, C, and D. We can solve them simultaneously to find the values of A, B, C, and D. Use any method, substitution method, matrix method, or elimination method, as long as you can be, you can be able to find the values of those constants, A, B, C, and D. Let's see how to solve them. Look at uh, equations one and two. You can easily get the values of A and B here. If I multiply equation one by, by two. So here it's like you have two A plus four B is equals to two. And equation two is negative two A plus b is equals to zero. So when I add them, what will I get? If I add them, I'm going to get uh, 5b is equals to two. So what is b? So from here, we get, uh, let, me, let me say this implies that b is equals to two over five, 2 over 5. If you know B, you can easily get A. So what is the value of A when B is equals to 2 over 5? Just substitute into one of these equations. If I put here 2 over 5, that will give us 4 over 5. A plus 4 over 5 is equals to 1. So that means A is equals to 1 minus 4 over 5. So that will give us 1 over 5. 1 minus 4 over 5 is 1 over 5. I hope that is clear. We have found A and B. So we can now simplify these two equations, replace A and B. In equation one, we'll now have negative two times A, that's negative two over five, then minus two times B, that should not be negative four over five. So what is negative two over five minus four over five? So this, that's negative six over five. So here in equation one, we'll just have now C plus 2D is equals to six over five. I've taken it to the right-hand side so that it becomes positive. What about the other equation, equation four? When I replace A and B, A is one over five. So here we'll have uh, two over five. B is two over five, so this is negative four over five. So what is 2 over 5 minus 4 over 5? That's negative 2 over 5. So we'll have here negative, yeah. negative 2c, negative 2c plus d is equals to. Uh, when I take it to the right-hand side, remember here it was 2 over 5 minus 4 over 5, which is negative 2 over 5. Take it to the right-hand side, you get 2 over 5. Again, you can now solve this simultaneously. What I want to do here is uh, to multiply this by two and this by one. So what do we get when I multiply by two? I'm going to get two uh, C plus four D is equals to 12 over five. The other one, you multiply by one, that's negative 2c plus d is equals to 2 over 5. So 
I can easily eliminate uh, C. So what I'm going to do here is to add them. When I add those two equations, I am going to get uh, 5D is equals to 14 over five. So that uh, from here, you can easily make D the subject. So here you'll get D is equals, you divide by five. So that is 14 over 25. So what about C? If D is equals to 14 over 25, I can replace it here to get C. Look at this. You can make C the subject. So when you put 14 over 25, this will give us 28 over 25. So C plus 28 over 25 is equals to 6 over 5. So it's like you get 6 over 5 minus 28 over 25. Let me write it here. 6 over 5 minus 28 over 25. You see, 6 over 5 is the same as if I multiply by 5 in the numerator and denominator, I'll have 30 over 25, the same as 6 over 5. So when you subtract, that will give us 2 over 25. So I can just undo what I've written there. Of course, you can press that in your calculator. It's easier. So that will give us 2 over 25 as the value of C. So right here, C is equals to 2 over 25. Now we know the values of A, B, and C. Replace those values into our appropriate choice of the particular integral, yp. Let's see our yp. And we say this is the appropriate choice of uh, the particular integral. So we now know the values of A, B, and C. We are going to replace them. And that will be our particular integral. So you say, therefore, let me write it down here. So you can say here that therefore, our particular integral, which we denote by yp of x, this is the same as, it was ax sine x. Our a is 1 over 5, so this is 1 over 5, x sine x, plus bx cos x, our b is 2 over 5, 2 over 5 x cos x, plus the c is uh, 2 over 25 uh, sine x, and lastly, plus 14 over 25 cos x. So that's our particular integral. So the general solution is the sum of the complementary function and the particular integral. So you can just say here that general solution, general solution is equals to complementary function plus the particular integral. What we are saying is that y is equals to yc plus yp. Or let me replace them. y is equals to exponential x c1 cos x plus c2 sine x. That is our complementary function. Now, the particular integral is the whole of what we have found there. Let me write it here. Plus 1 over 5 x sine x plus 2 over 5 x cos x plus 2 over 25 sine x 
And lastly, plus uh, 14 over 25 cos x. So that is the general solution where C1 and C2 are arbitrary constants. So this is how to use the method of undetermined coefficients to find the general solution of any uh, linear ODE of the second order, which is non-homogeneous. I want us to look at uh, part B, the same idea. So I'll write down here. In part B, what was the question? Let's go back and check. Uh, our question in part B was, uh, you can just go up and check it. That was d squared y over dx squared minus 2 dy dx minus 3y is equals to x exponential negative x. So let me write it. So we write that what we have in part b is d squared y. I'm going to write it down. d squared y over dx squared. Here we have minus 2 dy dx. Minus 3y is equals to x times exponential negative x. So again, you need to write this in terms of the d operator. So this uh, can now be written as d squared. Now you know how to write an equation in terms of the d operator. Minus 2d minus 3 operating on y to give us x exponential negative x. So we'll have two solutions. The first one is the complementary function, which we need to obtain by solving the homogeneous part of this ODE. So I'll write CF to denote uh, simply an abbreviation for the complementary function. Remember that it is denoted by YC as a function of X, that's the complementary function. So we need to solve the homogeneous part that is d squared minus 2d minus 3 operating on y to give us 0. So what is the auxiliary equation? Auxiliary equation is d squared minus 2d minus 3 is equals to 0. This is quadratic in the d operator. So we can use quadratic formula to find the roots. The roots, let me use quadratic formula. d1 and 2 is negative b, so it's negative of negative 2 plus or minus the square root of negative b squared. Our no, not negative b squared, should be b squared. Our b is negative 2, so negative 2 squared minus 4 times our a is 1. Our c is negative 3. Everything over 2 times a. So this is over 2 times 1. Our a is 1. I hope you recall the quadratic formula. So that when I simplify this, I'm going to get 2 plus or minus. Look at the square root. That would be 4 minus, uh, no, that's 4 plus 12, which is 16. So that's root 16 divided by 2, which you can as well write as 2 plus or minus 4 over 2 
which when you simplify, you get one plus or minus two. I've divided by two. So this simply means that we have two roots. The first one, D1, is equals to one plus two, which is three. One plus two, and that is equals to three. The other root, D2, is one minus two, which is negative one. That is equals to negative one. So look at those roots, they are real and distinct. These are real and distinct. One of them is alpha, the other one is beta. So let me call this, uh, any of them can be alpha, any of them can be beta. So we can say that uh, let this be alpha, alpha is negative one, and the beta is three. So this is beta, this is alpha. So that the general solution, or simply the solution corresponding to those roots is given by yc of x is equals to an arbitrary constant, call it c1, exponential alpha x plus c2 exponential beta x, where c1 and c2 are arbitrary constants. If I replace alpha and beta, this is what I'm going to get. We are going to get c1 exponential negative x plus c2 exponential 3x. So you can just say or our yc of x is equals to this one. So let me bracket this. Now we need to find the other solution, the particular integral. So right here part two, find the particular integral using the method of undetermined coefficients. This is the same as yp as a function of x. How do we find it using that method? We need to focus on the right hand side function of the given ODE. Look at this, this right hand side function, the R of X, this one, R of X. It is X times exponential negative X. So I told you for you to get the particular integral, you just need the general form of the function that we have on the right hand side. If it is a product of functions, you get product of their general forms. So like here, we are going to say that uh, the right hand side function, right hand side function that is R of X, R as a function of X is equals to x times exponential negative x. This is a product of two functions. x is a polynomial of degree one, is linear. So I'll comment on this and write polynomial of degree one. This other one is exponential function We have a product of those two functions. So we need their general forms. When you have a polynomial of degree one, what is the general form of such polynomial? So you can say this implies that our yp of x is equals to a linear polynomial is the same as a1, a1x, 
plus you can say b1 or even a2 whichever just a constant the one x plus a2 what about exponential is simply b1 b1 exponential negative x that's the general form of that function so that uh, when i open the bracket what will i get i'll get a1 x times b1 exponential x that should give us multiply that should give us you can call it ax exponential negative x the other one a2 times b1 call it b exponential negative x you can say here yeah, or this is our yp when i simplify or expand it you get that but uh, you need to ask yourself, is this the appropriate choice of yp? You need to take note, what I'm calling a is where we have a1 times b1. That's what I'm calling a. And what I'm calling b is, uh, I can write here, that the a is simply a1 times b1. So this is a1, b1. What I'm calling B is uh, A2 times B1. Because I told you, when you multiply any two arbitrary constants, you get another arbitrary constant. A, B, those are just constants which we don't know their values. We need to determine their values. So before we proceed with this choice of YP, you must ensure that it is a unique choice. By unique, I mean that you need to check our solution in YC, at the complementary function, and this choice of YP, ensure that no none of those terms on the right-hand side of those two solutions is similar to the other. So like for here, look at, uh, let me explain it here. The first term, we have a constant times x exponential negative x. Do we have it in our yc? I cannot see it. A constant times exponential negative x times x is not there. What about this other one? A constant times exponential negative x. Look at it here. Do we have such kind of a function? This here, I can see it, a constant times exponential negative x. So this term here is similar to this other one. Let me use another color. Those two terms are similar. You look, look at this. A constant times exponential negative x. And also this one a constant times exponential negative x. Those terms are similar. And so we have to refine our choice of yp. By refining means that you are going to multiply that choice of yp by x. If you still find that there's a term that is similar, continue multiplying by x until you make those terms unique. So what I'm going to do here because those two terms are similar, we refine this, refine it, refine, and to refine it, you multiply it by x. Is what I mean, multiply the right-hand side by x. That's what I mean by refining this right-hand side. By refining that choice of yp, it means you multiply the right-hand side of that by x. And then you check again, compare now the new yp with our yc. Are there some terms which are similar? If none of them are similar, then that means that that is the appropriate choice of yp. So let's multiply and see what you're going to get. 
So you will say that therefore, our yp, our yp of x is equals to, now when I multiply by x here, I'm going to get ax squared times exponential negative x, then plus bx times exponential negative x. Before we say that this is the appropriate choice, again, let's see. Compare that with our yc. Now look at the first term, a constant times x squared times exponential negative x. Do we have it in our yc? I cannot see that. What about the other one, the other term? A constant times x times exponential x, I cannot see it here. That means that this is the unique choice of yp. It is an appropriate choice of yp. There's no term that is similar to those terms in yc. So I'm going to bracket this one and comment on this that uh, it is the appropriate choice of the particular integral. So you can say this, that uh, this is the appropriate choice, appropriate choice of the particular integral. Now, this is a solution of the ODE in part B. And I told you, when you talk of a solution, it is simply a function that satisfies the given ODE. For it to satisfy, it means if I substitute it, this function and its derivatives into the ODE, then what I have on the left-hand side must be the same as what I have on the right-hand side. So let's get the derivatives of this function. We get the first derivative and the second derivative because our ODE is of order two. So the highest derivative there is two, the second derivative. So now you are going to say that uh, yp prime as a function of x, you know how to differentiate. So here we are going to use product rule because I can see we have a product of two functions of x. So when I different, because this can now be u, right here, this is u, this is v. Differentiate u, that will be 2x. So here we have 2a, 2ax, exponential negative x. Now we are going to differentiate v. Our v is exponential negative x. That will give us negative exponential negative x. So this is negative a x squared exponential negative x. What about this other term? Again, product rule. This will give us plus b exponential negative x. Then minus bx exponential negative x. That's what we have. Uh, is it possible uh, to simplify this? I think it's possible. So this can as well be written as negative ax squared Then I want those with x is negative x squared exponential negative x. Then I can see plus 2a minus b x exponential negative x. And finally, I have b exponential negative x. So I've simplified that. So you can just say here, or this is our y, yp prime. yp prime is that one. I can bracket this. 
Uh, let's get YP double prime. So again, you differentiate. So you write here YP double prime. It's also a function of X. So what are we going to get here? Product rule that will give us negative uh, 2A X exponential negative X plus A X squared exponential negative X Let's differentiate the other term. That again is plus 2b, no, that's 2a minus b. Make sure that you don't confuse those, those uh, constants because once you confuse them, even in the differentiation, then you will get the correct answer. So this is exponential negative x minus 2a minus b. X exponential negative X, then minus B. I'm differentiating this other term minus B exponential negative X. If I simplify, I'll have this as uh, let me start with the coefficient of X squared. This will be AX squared x squared exponential negative x. Those with x only is this one. That's the first one. Remember already I'm done with this. So I'm going to combine this and this other one. So here we'll have negative 2a. Then there's another negative 2a plus b. So that's negative 4a. So I'll write here plus negative 4a plus b. This is x times exponential negative x. And then now let's combine this and also this. They are like terms. So we have 2b minus 2a minus b then minus another b. So that's 2a minus 2b. So I'll write here plus 2a 2a minus 2b times exponential negative x. So that's what we have. Now, what do we do next? Write here y, y p double prime. Again, you can bracket this. So when you substitute uh, yp and its derivative into the ODE, you should be able to get what the function that we have on the right-hand side. So in terms of the particular integral, what will be this equation? What will it look like? This equation will now look like yp double prime minus two yp prime minus three yp is equals to what we have on the right hand side. X times exponential negative X. So let me write that down. And then we compare the coefficients on the left hand side and the right hand side. So when you substitute this uh, function and its derivatives into the ODE, we need to get this equation we need to get yp double prime, this is double prime, minus two yp prime minus three yp is equals to x times exponential negative x. We can replace them. Or let me start with yp double prime. That is ax squared exponential negative x 
plus uh, negative 4a plus b x exponential negative x plus 2a minus 2b exponential negative x that, that's the yp double prime this one what about uh, the other the other term is negative 2 times yp prime so look at our yp prime multiply that by negative 2 so I'll multiply this by negative 2 so that we have, remember here we now have negative 2 times this term. That will be positive 2ax squared exponential negative x. So that's positive 2ax squared exponential negative x. What about the other one is plus, that will now give us negative 4a. We multiply by negative 2. So that's negative 4a plus 2b. x exponential negative x. The other one is negative 2b. Exponential negative x. What about the third term? It's negative 3 times yp. Look at our yp. Is this one here? So you multiply the right hand side by negative three. So the, what will it give us? That will give us negative three a x squared exponential negative x minus three b x exponential negative x. So I'll write it here. Minus three a x squared exponential negative x. Then minus 3b x exponential negative x. That is the left hand side. The right hand side we need to get x times exponential negative x. Now let, let's combine the like terms on the left hand side. So you can say that, uh, or look at uh, the coefficients of x squared exponential negative x. We have another one here, another one here. So I have a plus 2a minus 3a. See, that is 0. a plus 2a, that is 3a. Then here, minus 3a, that is 0. So that term will vanish. They will cancel out. So I can just simplify this one and this and this together will vanish. Vanishing means it will give us zero, which I don't need to write. Let's look at these other coefficients of x exponential x. One is there, another one is here. There's another one here. So what do we get? Here we have negative 4a plus b. Here we have negative 4a plus 2b, and here we have negative 3b. So when you add them, you get negative 8a. That's what you have there. b plus 2b, that is 3b, and minus 3b, that is 0, which I don't need to write. So it is negative 8ax exponential negative x. So I've combined those. Then lastly, we have this and this. 2a minus 2b, then minus another 2b. That's 2a minus 4b. So you can write plus 2a minus 4b. That's times exponential negative x. That should give us x exponential negative x. That's on the right hand side. There's another term which we don't know. Look at the left hand side. We have x exponential negative x. Here we don't have anything. So I can just insert what is missing. 0 exponential negative x. So what we do, we equate 
the corresponding coefficient. So you're going to write the coefficients. Coef means coefficients. Then coefficients of uh, the first one is x exponential negative x. Look at the left hand side and the right hand side. So what do we have on the left hand side is negative 8a. On the right hand side we have 1. That's equals to 1. So this is the first equation. Again, the coefficients of the other function is uh, simply exponential negative x. What do we have on the left hand side is 2a minus 4b. That's on the left hand side. The right hand side we have 0. So this is equation 2. You need to solve them simultaneously to get a and b. In fact, if you look at the first equation, you can easily find a from here. Our a is equals to negative 1 over 8. Now you can find b. Look at this equation. If I make b the subject, it means b will be equal to uh, 2a over 4. 2a over 4 is simply 1 over 2a. 1 over 2a. Which is the same as uh, 1 over 2 times negative 1 over 8 is the same as negative 1 over 16. So we now know the value of A and the value of B, so that when you replace them into the choice of YP, that will give us the particular integral. So let's, let's see what we had here as our particular integral. So I'm going to replace uh, A and B here in this uh, choice of YP. Remember it was AX squared exponential negative X plus bx exponential negative x. So what we do is here is to replace those values of a and b. So you can say that uh, therefore, our particular integral, particular integral is uh, yp of x, Just replace a and b. So our a is negative 1 over 8. So negative 1 over 8. x squared. Exponential negative x. Our b is negative 1 over 16. Negative 1 over 16. x exponential negative x. So we now have those two solutions, the complementary function and the particular integral. So we need to find the general solution. And I told you general solution, you simply add the two solutions. So you write general solution. That is equals to complementary function plus the particular integral. And just say or y is equals to yc plus yp. I can replace them because we got them. You can just say or y is equals to, what is yc? It was c1, c1 exponential negative x plus c2. It should be C, C2, exponential 3x, plus now our yp we got negative 1 over 8, so that should be negative. Let me read. That's negative 1 over 8, x squared, exponential negative x, then minus 1 over 16, x, exponential negative x. 
So this is the general solution. If you want to find the particular solution, you need to apply the given boundary condition if they are there. But in this case, we have not been given, not boundary, but initial conditions. We have not been given such conditions. And so we cannot find the values of C1 and C2. C1 and C2 are arbitrary constants. So that's how to use the method of undetermined coefficient to solve non-homogeneous ODEs of the second order. Thank you all for watching this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. That is Professor Francis Okech. When you go to the YouTube search, type Francis Okech or Prof Francis Okech and you will find me right there. Also, don't forget to comment, like, and share this video. When you meet next time, we look at uh, more problems in non-homogeneous linear ODEs of the second order. Bye-bye.